time for a new book haul video. I'm super excited. In the last couple of weeks, I've accumulated a couple books, as you can see, and I wanted to share them with you. That way you can tell me which ones you have read, which ones I should focus on. And I'm really excited because I recently did a couple videos where I was reviewing a lot of different prizes and just thinking about different challenges that I could do for next year. And because I did those videos, I've been remembering a couple books and I was lucky enough to find a couple. So let's discuss these kind of a fall really not that much book haul, but just a few exciting ones. So you never know, okay, what you're going to find when you use Bookshop. Some months it's amazing, some months it's like mm, a bit of a stretch, but this one I ordered online because could not find it. It is a used copy, but this is First Frost, which I have the first book right here. This is Garden Spells. I've been raving about it. Okay, but bear with me. This is so good. This is Practical Magic 2.0. If you like the movie, read this, uh, small town, witches, uh, in a family, two sisters, there's some, but a little bit of romance, a little bit of drama, but overall I think it was really cozy and I wanted more and I was really excited that I saw that there was a second book and again could not find any library because it is older and I feel like this looks like a library copy and I just realized <laughs> that it is. You know when you can tell when holding them? Like, I feel like they have this, like, reinforced portion. Uh, but yeah, this is from the UK. And it was last taken out in 2020. Uh, but yes, it's the second book. I don't know if it's going to be as good because I feel like cozy, you know, fantasy like that, where not that much happens in the first book, you wonder what's going to happen in the second one. But I don't care because I like the cozy vibes and I wanted more. So I have my new... <laughs> English uh, library edition and I'm excited so I have it we'll be reading that I don't know if I'm gonna wait until next year or not I I'll see what happens because currently I'm a little bit in a reading slump you'll see that in my next vlog if it's not already up uh, but yeah that's the first one uh, the next two are part of the challenges okay I kept seeing this other edition I'll put it on the screen this is the mountain in the sea and when I saw this one, I was like, I feel like this title like rings a bell, but really I just wanted to own this because of the cover. I mean, I don't have enough green books. Can we talk about this for a second? I used to not care about <laughs> what the books I bought look like because I buy used books and like I'll take what I can get kind of thing. But I'm realizing that certain colors that I love, like green or purple, there aren't enough books that have that color. And it could be because of the genres that I read, but like this is so much more fun and look, I don't even know what that is. Is that like, I don't know, it looks like a stingray or something. Anyway, more books. Please be cool like this. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy that I not only found a copy of this, but the prettier edition that I didn't even know existed. And I believe this one is a sci-fi where um, it's a my marine biologist, which who didn't want to become a marine biologist as a kid? And they're studying octopuses? I thought it was octopi. I'm glad that you can actually say octopuses. Okay, but I've read a couple <laughs> sci-fi books that have octopuses, and now I'm curious to see Battle of the Books with octopuses. That did not sound, that does not roll off the tongue, but I was curious. I want to see if this one is going to be great, and again, let's be real, I really wanted to own this because it looks really cool. So, uh, but it's part of my challenges. I don't remember if it was the Yugo Award or uh, the other one that I can't remember right now, Nebula. I think it might have been both because a lot of them uh, repeated themselves, but I saw it on one of those lists, so I have it now. I'll add it to my list. And this one, I already told you that I bought it, but I didn't realize that it was going to be this thick when I saw it. Uh, this is the Demon Copperhead. It's because my edition is the large print edition, um, but it's okay. I mean, I wear glasses, so this can't hurt me. <laughs> I didn't realize how thick it was going to be, though, but I saw this... I don't remember which prize. Now I'm seeing that it's part of the Oprah book club, which <sighs> fake stickers, but I saw it on multiple prizes and it's not my usual genre. I don't know if it's considered like historical fiction or just literally fiction in general, but you're following this kid uh, and he lives, I believe in the Appalach Appalachian <laughs> mountains. It doesn't say so on the back, but I'm pretty sure I remember that. And people were saying that this is like a modern uh, David Copperfield which I haven't read, so really, why am I saying that? But might ring a bell for you. And yeah, I was curious. I don't read a ton of historical fiction or literary fiction, but I like to read a handful every year. And sometimes, you know, I find one that I really like. So that's one that was really, really popular. The reviews and the ratings are really, really positive. So of course, I wanted to try it. 
that way you can see the spines. There you go. I have read pretty much everything Jane Austen has written, at least all of her full length novel. And then I saw this. This is Senditon? Sen Senditon? Send. It sounds wrong. And other stories, which is some of her like shorter stories. I have read. Uh, there are three in here. There's Senditon, there's Lady Susan, and the Watson. I have read Lady Susan, but I haven't read the other two. And I feel like after that, I think I have read everything. She is one of my favorite authors. I appreciate her sassy sense of humor. I feel like I will never get over the fact that they had to, her family members had to burn her letters because of how possibly it could have been bringing shame to her and her family. <laughs> I want to know, what did she write? Because we know there was some drama there. Uh, but yes, I wanted to, you know, try to read everything else by her. Maybe one day I'll do a video reading all of them. Uh, but yes, I was curious if these were worth it. I believe there's a TV show actually for this one, which I haven't watched. We'll read the short story first. It's not that short. It's 78 pages. Uh, if you are curious about Lady Susan, it's written like a letter format and there's a movie, I think it's Love and Friendship, and the intro is so funny. I feel they really captured the sense of humor of Jane Austen, but yeah, would recommend. I said how I, I've become, you know, a little bit more into pretty covers and it's because booktube and like Instagram, it got to me, what can you do? And when I find a prettier edition of a book that I really like, that I've already read, of course I'm going to buy it. I'm trying not to do that when I haven't read the book, just in case, you know? But I now have the full trilogy. Uh, this is my favorite series, actually, by Octavia E. Butler. This is Dawn, the first book in the Xenogenesis series, or sometimes it's called the Lilith Brood series. And it's a first contact with aliens, but she's just, I am obsessed with her, okay? She is a fantastic author. I have read almost all of her work. I'm working on the rest. And this will just blow your mind, definitely will make you uncomfortable, but I really like that essentially it starts with uh, humanity, we all each other. Uh, I think it was a nuclear war and aliens swooped in last second, save a couple people. And will we be able to find, you know, a middle ground between us? Is something that they see as positive, something that is compatible with our vision? Are humans just hopelessly sucky? Who knows? You have to read it. Uh, would recommend, like I said, and now this is the only three of the trilogy that I didn't own the pretty edition. So I had the really ugly combined edition and yeah, I've been accumulating the other books in the series in this newest edition. I think this is like 2007, 2021. Wow, these are really recent. I'm really glad that they're actually reprinting them in like prettier edition because let's be real, nobody wants to read the other ones. So this is much easier to tell you, you need to read this. This is, if you read sci-fi, you need to, you need to. I've been annoying about her, but I will continue to do so. <laughs> the next one, okay. I believe this was recommended by some of you in the comment section. I was trying to find a couple like sillier books to read in between other ones because my taste is changing a little bit and once in a while I want something that is a bit more light and fun. And this is the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. And I think this is like a murder mystery, like cozy one. And I think it's set, yeah, it's uh, in the Victorian era. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but I really wanted to try it. I mean, library sale, it was a dollar. So what do I have to lose? And it's saying Bridgerton meets Peaky Blinders, crime, crime and Crumpets. <laughs> oh, I think there's also a little bit of romance in there. Listen, I'm going to try it. I believe this is part of a series and I'm pretty sure this is the first one. So I'll try it out. I'll let you know how it goes. But if you have read it, let me know. Because again, I'm pretty sure some of you commented that I should try this one because I was trying to find new like cozy murder mysteries. And I feel like there's a bunch of them set in like London or like England in general, which probably helps with the cozy vibes. So I'll let you know. Okay, the next one. I also ordered that one online and I am really annoyed and like I want to know what would you do in my shoes because I wanted to try more Korean translation because I'm trying to read just more translation in general and I've tried a lot of Japanese ones and I feel like they translate really dryly in English. A few of you actually told me to try them in French which I probably will but I wanted to try Korean ones because I only can remember like one or two and I wanted to try more. Um, so I wanted to try this one. This is Human Axe and I got, I think it's The Vegetarian, the other book by the author. Anyway, I ordered this edition because I thought it was cool. There's also this other one um, and they sent me this one. I spent a dollar more to get the other edition, so like I'm tempted to just like send it back, but it just seems 
seems like so much work because I really do want to read the book. But I didn't want the ones with the shells or the, the, the bullets. I didn't want that edition. But now that's the one I have. So I think I'm probably just going to be too lazy to return it. But I'm, I'm really annoyed. Anyway, I'll probably get over it soon. But... <laughs> I wanted to try this one. I believe this one is a uh, student revolution, I want to say. Yeah, there's the student uprising and I believe one of the student is murdered and examination of humanity at its most appalling and its most hopeful. So why don't you give this one a shot? Would you consider that historical fiction, 1980? I feel that, is it that far? Isn't it crazy? I feel like before 2000 doesn't feel that far away, but that one. Oh, okay. Let, let me jump to these two because I'm really excited. So I have never been that into reading like the old like Greek myths and like the gods and everything because I always felt like they were pretty sexist, which they are. Uh, but there's been this new female author or translator that has been translating the work and apparently it's a lot less sexist and like a few of the changes that were made are a lot more. There are differences in the words she chose to translate other words from. Does that make sense? Probably not. But I decided to order her two books. So if I do indeed become a reader of those, I'm intimidated. Okay, I'm going to be honest. But I am curious to read them now a lot more than I used to be. So the author translator is Emily Wilson and uh, the Odyssey was the one that was already out. I believe she's the first female author translating. I don't remember if it was this one or this one or both, either way. But I know that some people have already started like comparing the translation in, um, again, the words that were used to describe the female characters, for example, are very different. So we have the Odyssey and then we have the Iliad. I feel like if I can read uh, the Song of Achilles, why can I not read one of these? I feel like these would be really nice to like study in school because I, again, am super intimidated. But I wanted to support her and then one day maybe I will have the courage. I can't be the only one that's stressed about these. I feel like it's something that I want to read once in my life, like War and Peace, but like Maybe not right now. <laughs> Maybe a couple pages a day, you know? And then I have a couple uh, nonfiction. Uh, they're all over the place, but you know, use book shopping. That's what happens. So the first one is The Beauty Myth, which I've been finding a lot of like older feminist books and I, I don't know who's cleaning up their house, but that makes me happy. Uh, this one was published in 91, but this edition is from 2002. So it's not that old once again. Why is it so bright? But I remember seeing quotes of this one. I really like the idea of reading like older feminist works and then comparing them to more modern ones to kind of just balancing my reading a little bit. And I don't know if it is the whole topic of the book, but it's the whole idea that you don't owe beauty to society, which that would be nice. Uh, that would be nice. So <laughs> that's the first one. And then uh, again, okay. Bear with me, bear with me. I personally feel like this book is a red flag. If I go to someone's house and I see this on their shelf, I will want to run away. I'm just gonna say it. Like this is a red flag. Uh, this is the 48 Laws of Power. Okay, bear with me. I feel like this is a, like reading a book to be prepared mentally for your enemies, but more like corporate world and like, you know, life. So it's not something that I'm gonna be reading to get tips on how to treat people, but more like, again, reading to recognize the patterns and like the signs and yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. Maybe one day I'll do um, a video where I review a bunch of non-fictions, like the scary, like the bro ones, you know? I feel like sometimes some of them are good, some of them are kind of terrifying. So I'll update you, but uh, yeah, again, don't judge me on that one, okay? And to balance it out, <laughs> I got this one. I was shocked to see it there. Uh, this is the Communist Manifesto. I didn't know it was this tiny. Look how ridiculously short that thing is. 30, not even 30 pages. So I'll update you. I thought this edition was actually pretty cool. So yeah. Um, are you also having whiplash from these books, <laughs> the last couple ones? <laughs> so yeah, that was a, an interesting book haul, I think. Uh, definitely, definitely all over the place. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but either way, I'll share those with you next month if I remember something. So yeah, fun little book haul. I feel like I have a couple good finds, a few fall ones, but definitely some for next year that I'm really excited to. I'm trying to focus on next year because the reading slump, it's been 
thumbs up, subscribe, let me know in the comment section if you have read any of these, how you felt about them, which, one, which ones I should prioritize, which books you have bought in the last couple of weeks. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.